Do 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 do. How where does this go? <laughs> oh, this goes here. Today's movie is Candy. Candy. Whoa, oh, anymore, and I get copyright striked. Well, hello. <laughs> so today's movie we're talking about is from 1968, and it's called Candy. It's a comedy movie starring Awa Allen as a uh, sexy alien or something, and a whole slew of stars. You got Ringo Starr, you got Marlon Brando, John Huston, uh, Walter Matthau, all taking turns trying to have sex with her. That's it. For two hours. That's the whole movie. Good night, everyone. In short, it's just not very good. Uh, not because of the racism or sexism. I mean, I could forgive that. Uh, it's just not as funny or outrageous as it thinks it is. The screenplay was written by the normally pretty reliable Buck Henry, who was just coming off writing the excellent The Graduate. And the book Candy, of which the film is based on, was written by Terry Southern and Mason Hoffenberg. Now, Terry Southern's a very accomplished author and screenwriter. Uh, he wrote Easy Rider, uh, Barbarella, Dr. Strangelove, and he had a series of kind of raunchy books in the 50s, including Blue Movie, This One Candy, and The Magic Christian, which was one of the first reviews I did on this channel, which was yet another movie that featured a member of... Let's see, I have it here. <clears throat> the B... The B... Beatles. So as I said, the cast is absolutely stacked with talent. You have Richard Burton playing a hapless drunk. You have Marlon Brando playing a rapey creep. Ryan. But this is also one of those movies that everyone involved in it would more than likely want to forget. In fact, Marlon Brando is on record saying it's the worst movie he's ever been involved in. But Ringo's been a little bit more forgiving. Your exploits weren't as successful, of course. Some of the films you made. Name one. Okay, Candy. Candy, that was really good. It was not. <laughs> I don't think the concept of the movie is inherently unfunny or couldn't be successful. It's just that it's so repetitive and it just drags on and on. I don't think I've ever been able to watch it in one sitting. It's a long, long two hours. Um, I liked the ending. I wish there was more surreal stuff like in the ending where it's one of those late 60s, early 70s movies endings where all the characters from the movie suddenly show up at the end. And just to make things a little bit more confusing, apparently the original book Candy was based off of this book, Candide, by Voltaire. Get it? Candide, 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 Candide. Although apparently Mason Hoffenberg has denounced any connection to it, but he's also welcomed in the rumors, and just like David Lee Roth says, and Who am I to get in the way of a good rumor? Please, come in, sit down, make yourself at home, I did. This movie to me really seems like it's one of those projects that they just kind of started, they just kind of started shooting, they didn't completely finish writing the script before they started the production, and all the celebrities making appearances feel like somebody's doing someone else a favor, if you know what I mean. And it's two hours because no one wanted to cut any of the scenes with the famous people in it, and that's part of the draw. And so many of the scenes in the book are just so over-the-top uncomfortable that they become funny, whereas in the movie they're just uncomfortable. Actor James Coburn remarked in the 90s that Candy was a much-hated movie. And he suggests that the Italian director Christian Marcand had a very different European sensibility and that everything was always one step too slow or there was just some kind of disconnect. One thing that doesn't really make sense though is that Ewa Allend is Swedish. She kind of feels like the director's 11th or 12th choice. She definitely wasn't the first. And it sort of begs the question, why in this all-American town uh, is your daughter inexplicably Swedish? Nonetheless, there's some making of footage featuring, among other people, Allen and Walter Matthau being interviewed and he's going on and on about how she's gonna be a great big star and she seems more surprised than anyone to be hearing this. You have a very fantastic kind of, of sophistication and, and, and a marvelous talent, a quiet, intelligent. This is absolutely beautiful. I, it's rare to find it in the 17-year-old in the girl. Thank you. You know, the thing is, you can do a movie about sexual taboos and pull it off and have it be both icky and still funny and smart at the same time. I'm thinking like Rita Sue and Bob 2 
or Lolita, or you could just watch a completely crazy 60s movie like The Magic Christian. So yeah, this is one of those movies that you can just watch once and cross it off your list, especially if you're a fan of not only, you know, wacky 60s movies, but stuff that's in that Beatles universe, I would say I feel exactly the same about this as I would with Wonderwall, where it's like, okay, seen it, it's off my list now. It's a toss-up between that one and this one as to which one more bites the weenie. But as far as positives go, I, I always like movies like this where it just keeps on changing up and you kind of don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, it is very repetitive, but at the same time, the settings keep changing and it's a, like a, a series of segments and vignettes. It's like almost bordering on like a sketch movie. And hey, there's nothing wrong with once in a while watching a totally wacky movie just for the sake of it and having all these uh, actors you recognize really letting themselves go. And again, it's fun to see Ringo back when he was still a member of the Beatles be in a movie. And it certainly doesn't hurt to have some 60s cuties in there. One of my favorites, Elsa Martinelli. If too much candy rots your teeth, then this shit right here rots my brain. Stay sexy, although not too sexy, because otherwise Richard Burton will start having sex with a mannequin and Ringo. And hey, there's nothing wrong with once in a... Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs>